Lunch and Learn. Hi, welcome to today's Lunch and Learn. My name is Sandel and I will be your host. Um, we also have uh, Akshay and Ashley who are here to, um, to help out. So um, yeah, we're ready to take your questions if you have any. Hi. Hello. So, uh, Sanil, I wanted to talk. I'm audible to you. Rishi? Uh, hi, I'm audible. Sorry, I'm not sure if you're saying anything. Uh, hello, am I audible? Yes. Now you are, yes. Okay, so like I, I was working on a like a, a failure and success mechanism. So like we have a dashboard uh, where I wanted to display uh, like if it, the flow is uh, getting completed successfully. So I wanted to display succeed and uh, if, if that is, that's uh, failing anywhere. So I wanted to display the failure part and the step that that is cause an error. So like so like if in case of success, so if we have a like a flow, so where mm -hmm. you, you want me to attach the flow to display the success message? So you have you have a flow that you're running, um, and you're you want to be able to display the results of that flow on your dashboard not so, result i just i was just uh, like uh, i was just confirming the like it, it, it's it, if it's running or not if it's running i'll uh, just write this flow name flow mm -hmm. id and message a uh, success success and if that is fail i'll uh, write there fail and i'll just uh, write the cause uh, of the failure. Got it. Wilson, you're going to say something? Yeah. <clears throat> I remember we were taking a look at this a little bit yesterday. So uh, I know that we were able to figure out that, sorry about the noise, one second. I know we were able to figure out that the, uh, the failure message had its own failure path. So now, uh, just so I'm understanding, are you just trying to display a form on that same failure path? With the information like the flow step name and everything is that right uh so i have done almost i'm done with the failure path uh, i am mm -hmm. working on the success path so if you can make me a panelist i can share my screen and show you what where i'm stuck at sure yeah i just did that yeah so weird that we're not able to reach the within that 45 seconds. Suppose, like, so then that first, the first step that we're going to do. So, so I was like, this is my main uh, flow. Yes. And no, I'll just show you the actual main flow. Is that going to make more sense? Okay. So, so this is the pagination thing that we do. And here I'll be attaching a, a sync flow, which will have the logic. So. So suppose if I attach, like if I want to display a success message, right? So I will attach, attach it here. Like I was planning to attach it here, but just in case uh, the flow gets failed and it will still come here and it will end right. So that then to the success message will be displayed. So I was thinking what to do in this case. Okay, give me just a second. I'm looking this over for you. So what's happening is if it succeeds, um, it's going to go through this for loop step. It's going to run this mm -hmm. multiply step and then run this async flow. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's going to come back to this for loop step. 
And then when it's finished, it runs this log message, but you mm -hmm. needed to show a success message, correct? Yes. Okay. So if if you just need to show a, a message um, anywhere, I guess I it have, depends on, go ahead. I have created data structure and a small flow. Yeah. But I was just uh, like, I wanted to I have a, like, I have a question that if just in case, if this, this gets fields and somewhere in between or anywhere in between, so th it will still end, right? It will still come to an end step. And if I attach my success flow here, and if that data structure is linked to the dashboard, it will come here and it will display, it will go through this and it will display the success message. Right. Well, if something fails in between, it could stop the flow potentially, uh, unless you mean like if there's a failure in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, right? so you mean, uh huh. So if so, you mean, like, go ahead. Mm -hmm, go ahead. No, 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 you go ahead. Okay, so you mean if that, if something is there that it's causing an error or exception, that flow will be stopped and it will not run through here, it will not come till here. So the async flow, let me think just for a minute. I know that they have a special, what I'm trying to, let me, give me just a moment because I know that with async flow, they behave differently than the regular flows do. Uh, but I'm gonna just research really quick if that would be the case. Just a minute, okay? Mm, sure. Right, so if it's async, uh, it just allows the primary flow to run independently while the subflow completes. So while it's waiting for the subflow to complete, it'll run the rest of it. But I don't know that that would, I don't know that it would stop. I don't know if it would continually running the rest of this flow like this, if there's an error, right? It's just saying like it's waiting for whatever steps are here to complete. So if you had like an assignment, the flow would still run right? But if there's an error that blocks the entire flow, uh, you may run into an issue where it, it doesn't go through the rest of this path here. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you so, want me to attach it right here? The async flow? No, no, the success flow. Yes, Just it, I think, so I think that if you're waiting for a success, I think it would make sense for it to come after this log step here. That way you you have the step logging it into the into the system and then you have a message or a form some end form just displaying for the user the end user mm -hmm. i think that would okay. be the best thing to do okay and i have one more thing so yesterday i talked to will and he had given me some inputs yes i'll just show you that one as well quickly okay And I'm going to quickly, while you're doing that, I'm just going to pop off the screen for a moment and get something for you too. So, so when um, I am like, I am fetching a model, so suppose here from here, if I'm giving an input to the project name that as a, like the flow ID, so it's working, it's giving me the project name, but when I attach it to the flow, it is not working. What's, is it not grabbing the, the project name or the step name? It's not grabbing the project name. Okay, let's debug and just see where this is going. It should be taking, when you have that exception, it should be grabbing the, the metadata here here it's grabbing but in the if i'm attaching this like success and failure flow to the other flow it's not grabbing anything so it's grabbing everything except the uh, uh project name so i'll just i have it save the data mm -hmm. if you can see here so it has given me the project name as allergy testing right but when i go to the if 
so here this is a same flow and i am taking the folder id as an input here you can see current okay, flow current folder flow id, ID. Yeah. yeah when i debug this it is not giving me the so it's failing here i'm not sure why well it caught the exception uh, let's go back into the that last screen. Uh, go ahead and debug again, and then just run that flow one more time. Mm -hmm. um, what is in here? Let's go into this catch exception because it caught the failure. Exception stack. Let's keep looking down in this stack. It should give us some information here. Step ID, here we go, flow name. Looking for project name though, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Let me see this information. Keep, uh, go ahead and keep scrolling. All right, so a lot of null, keep going. Past the structure here. I don't think that the project name is in that structure or in the current account. Because what I'm wondering is if it's in this catch exception step here, and that's why it's not passing through to that next step. Um, any thoughts from other panelists on that? Just wanted to check my homework here. Because I know we're looking in this data. So we have um, Jaya, Jaya Krishna, is saying yeah. that they are able to answer this question. Oh, OK. Um, so yeah hello. okay hi this is jk uh so i mean to answer to the previous question uh where you know if any exception happens in a for loop let's say it abruptly okay, stops yeah. right and you want to show a message so the trick would be using the catch exception block right uh which would be linked to the end step but before you connect to the end step you can have a message box uh, or the or the, or the pop-up, right? Mm -hmm. So that way, when a flow breaks abruptly, it would uh, get into the catch exception block and it can show a graceful mm -hmm. message to the user, right? So regardless of whether it's a synchronous versus asynchronous flow you're calling inside the form loop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Oh, uh... uh, yes, thanks. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes, so, so my question was more towards like the success. Uh, if the flow is getting succeed, I wanted to have a pop-up after getting it succeeded. Sure, like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can do so. What the way you would do is that you know before on a on a good path when everything is working correctly, before you connect to the end step, you can have a message pop up, right? And then you would have another pop up from the catch exception block, right? So that would get executed only if there is an exception. Otherwise, it's going to follow through the normal path, and then it will show you a good message, mm -hmm. right? Sure. So that yeah. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Thank you, Jagdish. Yep. Awesome. So, JK, you had the next question. Um, and you have a form that contains a tab container yeah. with um, three tabs. You want a button on the first tab. Um, you want a button on every tab. Um, yeah. And when you, when you click that button, you want it to navigate to the next tab. Right? Exactly. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe the remaining panelists can um, help me with this. Uh, all right, so I'm going to share my screen just so you see what I've, I've been working on. Uh, can we see what I have here? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, this is exactly what I'm looking for, correct? Okay, yeah. so you have, all right, so we have this. Now I just took the liberty of creating this um, sure. so that we could speed through the solution. Yeah, exactly. I was I was thinking we could use an active form tool to do this, but um, I went in to go check that, and um, I didn't really find the option that I was looking for. Like we have a tab container here, uh -huh. um, but 
the trigger is when the tab is changed. So what we want to do is to use the button on there to change the tab. So panelists, um, do any of you have a, um, a solution for me? Um, I don't have any implemented solution, Sandra, but I can talk through this. Uh -huh. So uh, instead of having uh, this button on the tab, what you can do is you can have it outside this component. Uh -huh. And then... Okay. So Akshay, what you're saying is like here, yeah. right? Yeah, anywhere on the form outside this. And then and can... the... The tab name, if you go in, if you click on the tab component mm -hmm. and you will see the tab, yeah, mm -hmm. you will see this uh, default tab from data name and some mm -hmm. other things. So th this is something that will change from the, from the workflow that you will have. So there will be some sort of a loop. And let's say you, we have a truth table which will define when you click on that button, which path to take. So that truth table will have, if it's, if it's tab A, output would be tab B. So that when you click on that button, the loop will take you to tab B. And so, if it's on tab B, the outcome of the truth table will be tab C. So that implementation will actually happen in the main flow where you're using the form. Sorry, I you know I, I can't uh, really comprehend in my head, right? So the default tab comes into play only when the pay, the whole form gets rendered. It doesn't. Uh, you can't influence it while I'm still on the form, right? So the way I'm thinking is that the way you're saying it is that so it has to exit from the whole form and then it has to relaunch the form with tab B in focus. Right, 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 right. 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 So yeah, that'll be a flickering, but then I'll be exiting. Mm -hmm. It won't be a smooth transition. Right. See, right now, if I click on tab B or tab C, it takes me right there, right? So right, right. So, so basically I'm trying to build something with the wizard, right? So in the tab B, I have about 20 properties and naturally I want to go to the next page. So instead of letting the user click on tab B in the top of the screen, rather he can click mm -hmm. because the, you know, from a process flow wise, you know, as he entered all the data, he's at the bottom of the screen with the cursor on. The next would be clicking the next button and then it takes them right to tab B, right? As opposed to going to the top of the screen and clicking it. That's all I'm trying to get it. If you want to do it outside then you are you have to save you have to persist whatever data has been entered in tab one into you know some storage and then on the page load you got to read the data and then set the focus to tab b right that's a lot of work right as opposed to just you know keep all the data on the form itself without persistence i mean the data will persist you don't have to really store it because it's part of the workflow so uh, it's just like uh, you can imagine it like you know there's a um, there's a button that takes you forward and backward. Yeah, but uh, so in your idea with the default tab name, uh, data name thing, right? Uh, are you exiting the form or are you staying inside the form itself? Technically, we are kind of refreshing the form. It's, we're not staying on the form. There will so, be a very marginal flicker, unnoticeable. No, no, no. So that means you are literally coming out of the form. And so in the parent flow, right, you're going mm -hmm. to look for the exit path for next, right? And yes. then yeah. Okay. And then you're coming back, right? So that, right. that means when you when you come back, it has to know what the data was entered on tab one. So that means Correct. tab one data has to be persisted. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it's going to lose, right? Right, right. And it will stay. No, no, the data won't be there unless I persist it. I mean, unless you save it, yeah. If you if you loop it back. Uh, so if you loop it back, oh, okay. So you're saying yeah. all the value would be in memory. Okay, it will be holding yeah. that uh, output data, right? And then, right, right, uh, right. okay, okay. Yeah, I see what you're saying. But okay, so there will be a flickering, right? So, you know, uh, it has I mean, to close I have implemented, and... okay. I have once implemented something like this and I was not able to do that with a button on the on the tabs, in mm -hmm. the phone, right? So oh, I see. that's the alternate which I came up with, and uh, the flicker was not that noticeable, to be honest. It was just like mm -hmm. uh, milliseconds or reflections. Mm -hmm. But if there are more data, maybe you'll see. Yeah, the, you know, it, it, yeah, it may increase. Yeah, with more data depending on. Load. Yeah. Okay. 
Gotcha. And then, you know, I also need to do like a visit with the previous and next, right? So if I'm on tab two, when I hit previous, it should go to tab one, right? Yeah. So again, the same concept, but uh, going backwards. Yeah. So you can imagine having two truth tables. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. One would be for the forward, another one would be for the backward, right? Mm -hmm. So when you click on that button, it goes to that truth table and then it sees, okay, what's the current tab now? And it shows the form again with you on that tab. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So that's the only way, right? Right now. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's that's a fix that I could come up with when I was working on something like this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Um, do we have any more questions? Okay. Anybody? <laughs> All right. Um, I guess today we're gonna take an early day here. Um, since we know we don't have any more questions. Um, but if you do think of something, please let us know. We're happy to um to all oh, we're always happy to help. Thank you so I much. have one question. Sorry. Uh, sure, sure. Uh, in in version eight of decisions, uh, I heard that uh, we can implement them in the containers, like um, in a Docker or uh, Kubernetes. So I was just looking through the documentation. Do we have um, uh, an example that you can uh, showcase from your side? How that all you know configured correctly? Um, well, sir, you have um, an answer to this. Sorry, JK, would you mind repeating the question for me? Oh, okay, the version eight of decisions, right, where it supports containerization, uh, uh -huh. where, where you can install decision on uh, Docker or Kubernetes, I don't know about OpenShift. Um, do we have uh, a live example that you can show how it is all configured? um you know on your side i'm afraid i i don't on on my local but i that is something that we could definitely organize for you okay um All right. what i can do of uh, i know normally will is the one who who uh is in these lunch and learns and he can set up uh like a follow-up uh for somebody to be able to set up a meeting okay uh, just to present it to you sure. um so i'll put that I'll put that in my notes um, and I'll make sure I reach out to the right people just to get in contact with you. That way we can showcase the, the container setup. Okay, and, and also the multi-tenancy, right? Which is something was taken out in version seven and put it back on version eight. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm interested in learning about that as well. Okay, so just like a package kind of meet. Yeah, I think uh, yeah. I think we we could benefit from a, like a separate meeting uh, sure. specifically for that too. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I'll I'll reach out um, to our CS team. Um, that way they can get back to you with uh, meeting setup time. Sure. Okay. You know my ad, my address and everything, right? I know it's FIS Global, right? Your name Correct. FIS Global. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. should be able to get that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. Great. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming. Um, I guess we'll. See you tomorrow. All right. Thank you. Bye. Thank you all. Bye-bye.